Today I'm going to show you how to make a liquid drum and bass tune like this. So there are various different ways you can start a drum and bass track. Some people like to start with the drums, other people like to start with the bass. But with me, I like to have the chords and the key in place first. So how do you determine what key the tune's going to be in? Well, you can either make some chords yourself using your keyboard or a guitar or something like that. Or if you like, you can just steal the chords from a sample. So as you can see in this clip, I have got my chords. This is how the guitar chords sound before time stretching them. And this is how it sounds after I've put it to the correct tempo for the project. So as you can hear, they're just some jazzy chords which were played on a Stratocaster type guitar. And for that reason, I'm naming this tune Stratospherical. So we're going to need some more instruments to go with our guitar loop. So what I've done is I've right clicked on this audio clip and chosen convert harmony to new MIDI clip. That gives us some MIDI information which we can use with various different VST instruments including Rhodes piano, normal piano, all sorts of different uh, melodies and things like that. So here I have created a Rhodes and a regular piano and here's how they're sounding. All right, now that we've got our chord structure and some extra instruments in place, I'm going to add a break beat. And the one I like to use a lot is the hot pants break. So I'm just bringing in the hot pants break. Now, you, there is a little trick you can use to make the sustain of each note a little bit shorter, and it kind of just cleans it up a bit. So what you need to do is click this arrow that's kind of pointing to the right with a line and the, there is a value that you can turn down from 100% to wherever you like and the more you turn it down the more it's going to shorten those notes. Now it does sound a little bit strange by itself but when it's layered up with another break and some kicks and snares and stuff it's going to sound sick and this break is basically just going to be used as a bit of a top loop so it's just the sort of high end high frequencies. So let's go ahead and layer the Amen break as well. And it's time to move on to layering some kicks and snares. When it comes to choosing a kick for drum and bass, there's a specific frequency range that you want it to hit in, which is around 90 or 100 hertz. Why am I saying that? Well, below that, you're going to have your sub bass, and you do not want this kick to be interfering too much with your sub bass. And above that, you've got the kind of mid bass area. Again, you uh, want the kick to stay out of the way of that. So if you can find one that's sort of kicking at like 90 or 100 hertz, then you've cracked it. So I'm just adding a snare as well. And let's hear how all of the drums are sounding. That's the kick, the snare and the breaks all together. Now moving on to the bass, I'm going to use this simple sine sub and I'm just going to make a quick bass line which is basically the root notes of these chords and add a bit of distortion and overtone and then to make this wobble I'm just going to use the auto filter 
put it on a low pass filter, turn on this LFO section and we can get a bit of a wobble going. And I'm also going to be using an 808 sub. So what I do is I get a simpler and put in my favorite 808 sample. And a little trick that I can show you is if you put a tuner after the simpler and then hit the A key on your computer keyboard, that's actually a C on the, on like, uh, the musical keyboard. So if you hit A and have a look on the tuner, what it's saying. Now what you wanna do is get that to say C. Now you can play your 808 on the keyboard and you know, you can drag in MIDI clips and they will actually be in the correct key. So there's a little tip to be able to play your 808 in perfect tune. And sometimes it can be difficult to hear if it's perfectly in tune. So another little tip I want to teach you is if you put your bass line an octave or two above, put it up so that it's in a higher register and then you'll be able to actually hear the notes it's playing. Once you're happy with it, it playing the correct notes and they're all perfectly in tune, just move it back down to where it was and it'll sound weighty, it'll sound heavy and it'll sound perfectly in tune. What I like to do at this stage is to organize my project into different groups. So all of the drums go into one group, all of the bass goes into another group, and the next group, I've kind of struggled with finding a right name for it in the past. What I settled on is Instrum. So that's basically all the instruments. It could be sampled instruments. It could be instruments you've played yourself and recorded in. Could be synths real instruments, anything. It's basically the musical parts of the tune. And if I'm making a tune that's got vocals, I will also have another group. So there's either four or three, depending on whether it's a vocal tune or not. In this case, instrumental, so I've got three groups. So I organize those, and sometimes I like to organize groups within groups. So if you've got like three different parts that are all playing the same chords, you might have a, a Rhodes and a piano and a guitar all playing the same thing. It's nice to group those together and do some EQing or some compression on, you know, get them to gel together as one. And that, that, that little group is within the instruments group. So the next section, I've labeled it as extra bits. So what does that include? It includes crashes, reverse crashes, little sound effects, little bleeps and bops. Um, you might have a little vocal sample in there. You might have risers that go up to the drop. So any of these little extra bits, now is the time to do them. Um, and then basically, once that's done, it's time for the arrangement. So. I recorded a little time lapse of me doing the arrangement, so enjoy that, and then we'll talk about what to do after it's arranged in just a second. So once you've got your arrangement, I mean, you can do this next stage before the arrangement or after the arrangement, but what I like to do next is EQ, compress, reverb, do the levels, basically you're mixing, right? Doing the mix. So um, a lot of people don't realize that when you're, when you're mixing, it's not just moving the faders and getting things to the right level. It's also to do with controlling dynamics 
add in reverb um and just getting the tune so that all of the parts fit together nothing's poking out of the mix nothing's too loud and nothing's too quiet so that's basically it the mix down is done the tune's sounding kind of finished and the final stage is so-called mastering now i'm not claiming to be a mastering engineer but that is basically the name that we give to making your tune louder at the end right so you might have mixed it kind of loud or kind of quiet to be honest with you it doesn't matter how loud or quiet you've mixed it within your project it could be peaking at minus 10 it could be peaking at minus one as long as it's not clipping and people might even argue with that some people like to just produce and their levels are going into the red but that's not me but whatever level you've got now it's time to add some kind of limiter or maximizer to the master so i won't go into too much detail here about the mastering process but what i will say is i like to use a clipper to control the peaks i like to do a little bit of final eqing if needed and then run it into ozone loudness maximizer which is basically a mastering limiter boost it up to as loud as i possibly can without it distorting or sounding like crap and that's about it and then the last plugin that i have on the chain is this ulean loudness meter now uh something that i didn't know about until fairly recently is this you know there's this system called lufs or lufs and that's the real way to measure loudness obviously everybody's tune is hitting zero zero db you know or just just below it so everyone's tune technically is peaking at the same level but you might have noticed if you're a dj or if you're just listening to tunes that certain people's tunes are louder than others why is that because they've managed to do things within their mix down to to boost it louder in terms of this lufs now i'm not sure what numbers the pros are getting but i'm trying to reach for about minus eight or minus seven maybe minus six but that's as, as loud as i possibly have ever made it so minus eight's cool minus seven's better all right so do what you can to try to make your tune as loud as possible but make sure it's not sounding terrible all right so thank you so much for watching this video thank you so much for sticking around till the end of the video and i hope you've learned something i hope you enjoy the tune if you do it's probably going to be on my band camp for sale soon enough so if you want to support me and my channel and my drum and bass career <laughs> go ahead and buy the track love you so much take care peace